Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you to the organizing committee, the third agricultural supply chain Asia 2021 for giving me the opportunity to present the result of our research on the use of distilled dry grain with solubles as a protein source in the practical diets for Pacific white shrimp with banami. My name is Romy Novriadi. I'm the researcher at the Directorate General of Aquaculture, Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries Republic of Indonesia. If we're talking about Pacific white shrimp, Lithopanus vanami, this species become one of the commodity, promising commodity and also the primary commodity from the aquaculture industry because Pacific white shrimp has a good market value, have a good adaptability to a range of diets, has a wide tolerance on the use of the plant-based feed ingredients on the diet formulation, and also has a soap production cycle compared to grouper, sea bass, or even cobia. And the good news is, Pacific white shrimp has a good genetic breeding program. And if we look at the data from gold surveys from 2000 and 2017, and also we can see on the slide that the shrimp productivity show an increasing trend year by year with better annual growth rate. And we know that China, Indonesia, Vietnam, India, and Ecuador still become the top five of major country producers for shrimp. And FAO make an estimation about the total shrimp feed use in 2018 around 8.26 million tons and this expected to rise up to 10.87 million tons by 2025. We know that we all agree that in, in order to achieve a good productivity, sustainability has to be included in the program, in the production system. And the diets for Lithopanus vanami must be based on the renewable and also the expendable feedstuff. We know that right now, the soybean meal, cottonseed meal, corn protein, and canola meal has been used to replace the inclusion level of the animal meal in the diet formulation. And if you look at in the past, in the 1919, around 69% of the animal meal has been used in the diet formulation, and only 19% of the plant-based feed ingredients used in the diet formulation. Right now, with a comprehensive research, the inclusion level of plant-based feed ingredients increased from 19% up to 53%. And the use of the animal meal is going down from 69 to 31%. In the future, we would like to increase more the inclusion level of plant-based feed ingredients and reduce more the inclusion level of the animal meal in the diet formulation. And one of the promising plant-based feed ingredients is the use of the distilled dry grain with solubles or we can say this as a DDGS. So by, by definition, DDGS is the product obtained after the removal of ethyl alcohol by distillation process from the yeast fermentation of the grain or grain mixture by condensing and also the drying process. <clears throat> so based on this background, we make a, a research, a field trial, with the objective is to evaluate the growth performance and also the proximate composition of the whole body of the shrimp in response to several inclusion levels of DDGS. In this research, we used 5, 10, and 15% inclusion levels to partially replace the use of the soy protein and also the wheat flour in the diet formulation. And this is the material and methods. All diets were formulated to contain approximately around 36% protein and 7% lipid. And all experimental diets were produced at the PT Suritani Pemuka, one of the commercial feed mill in Indonesia. And the growth trials were carried out at the Batam De Hai Seng research station in Batam, Indonesia. This is the composition of diets containing various levels of DDGS. So we can see on the slide here, we use a 5%, 10%, and 15% inclusion level of DDGS and partially replace the inclusion level of the soybean meal or soy protein in the diet formulation. We also use the lysine here to supplement the diet to enhance the nutritional profile of the experimental diets. So if we look at the proximate composition of the diets containing various levels of DDGS, we can see in the basal diet and also the experimental diet, we do not see any difference in terms of the crude protein, dry matter, crude fat, and phosphorus, and also the S content. And if you look at the amino acid composition of the experimental diets, by supplementing the experimental diet with lysine, we have a comparative value between basal diet and experimental diet for the lysine levels and also for the methionine levels in the diet. Form, in the diet. <clears throat> for the growth trial, 
We use this uh, four treatments and 10 replicates per treatment. We stock 15 shrimp with average initial weight of 1.04 plus minus 0.04 gram. And we stock them into 70 times 35 times 40 centimeters of aquarium tank. Or this is equal with 150 post larvae per square meter. And we culture them for 52 days. The feeding strategy that we use is we feed them with four times daily with assume FCR around 1.5 and the growth prediction around one gram per week. And we evaluate the pH, the dissolved oxygen, the water temperature and salinity using the Aquatrol multi-parameters and connected with the apps for better data recording system. And also we measure the total ammonia, nitrogen and nitrate and nitrate uh, in the weekly observation period. And this is the water quality data during the culture period. The temperature, the dissolved oxygen, the pH and the salinity during the morning and afternoon observation, all still, all still within the acceptable range to support the growth of the vanami. And also for the ammonia and nitrate composition or level are still within the acceptable range to support the growth of the vanami. And this is the response of the juvenile of little balanced vanamito diets with different levels of DDGS for 52 days. Statistically, we do not see any difference in terms of the vinyl biomass, final mean weight, the survival, the weight gain percentage, the FCR, the thermal growth coefficient, and also the protein retention ratio. However, biologically, we can see there's a good growth in terms of the final biomass and also in terms of the final mean weight by using the 5% and 10%. And this has become a, a good a point here that on the, the use of the DDGS up to 15% do not have any significant difference in terms of the growth performance compared to the use of the soy protein. So this is the proximate composition of the whole body of shrimp after 52 days. And the value represents the mean of 10 replicates. We can see here on the slide, there is no difference in terms of the crude protein, water, fat content, dry matter, and also S content in the whole body of the shrimp at the end of the growth trial. So the conclusion of my research to, uh, with the use of the DDGS in this study, under the condition of the present study, DDGS can be used up to 15% to partially replace the use of the soy protein and the wheat flour without compromising the growth of Pacific white shrimp. And this is more interesting. In terms of the economical value of cost per unit of protein, DDGS is a very promising alternative to be used in the diet formulation. So further, further research need to focus on the mycotoxic issue and long-term effect on the use of the regular protein DDGS in the stream culture system in the long-term culture period. So thank you for the opportunity to share my talk. I'm happy to answer all your questions. And thank you once again to the organizing committee. And you can shoot me an email if you have a further question to my email address that uh, show on the slide. Nobody, Romy at yahoo.com. Thank you, thank you, and thank you so much.